Hey guys, thanks for joining us. I would like you guys to go ahead and share. I am so excited. We have a great, amazing, I don't know how to say it, awesome, <laughs> stupendous, spectacular artist today. I am so excited that I've met this young lady and I am so excited to share her with you guys. Um, her work is absolutely phenomenal. I love, 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 love her work and I am so excited. Um, so go ahead and do me a favor and share, 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 share with your friends, your family. I don't care. Share with people you don't know. It doesn't matter because this is something they don't want to miss because this young lady not only operates in the real world, she is globally known in the virtual world. And that was the key for me. I was like, what? Come on, tell me all about it. And when she opened up, like, it was like, opened up my mind to this whole entire virtual world. And I had dabbled in it a little bit, but not to the extent that this young lady, she is absolutely phenomenal and her work is phenomenal. And so I am not going to hold up you guys for too long because I'm going to bring her up, but I just wanted you guys to see, I'm just going to just put a few things up because she's going to show us her whole entire, like an entire, she's going to walk us through an entire virtual gallery of stuff, but her work is absolutely amazing. So just want to just kind of tease you a little bit about what you are about to be exposed to and what you are about to see. So I'm going to bring her up. I am your host today and you guys probably know me, but I'm going to go ahead and put up there. I'm your host, Louise Cutler today. And, but I'm going to bring up this young lady. Come on up. Miss Judy Lynn. She is Hello. fantastic. <laughs> welcome. <laughs> Hi, thanks for having me. <laughs> it's good welcome, to be here. welcome, welcome. I am so excited to have you here with us and to share about yourself, your artwork. You have such an amazing background. When I first met you, you were like, well, I've never really shown, um, you know, <laughs> in a gallery sort of and i was like well what have you done and you were like it was more virtual i was like well bam you right. <laughs> <laughs> you True. have shown that's it you've been out there oh you've got a couple of people here we go oh, here we go all right chuck all right we got a chuck uh who is that all right there we go we got awesome on the and debbie is here hey 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 Thank you guys for tuning in. We are so happy to have you guys. So we're just going to start off with my main question. I always ask people like, Louise, you asked, I said, you know what? I asked that question because it's, it's right. the question. Tell us, some, tell us about yourself. Well, let me see. Um, been an artist pretty much from birth, <laughs> I think we all like to say that, you know, ever since I could hold a crayon in my hand, but that's that's true. I was drawing all over everything, ask my mother. But um, yeah, and I studied art all through school. Um, majored in graph, uh, commercial art in high school, went to college for graphic design, and I was never thinking about painting, really, uh -huh. until to, to, painting was something that you had to do in, as part of your graphic design work in college, back in the Stone Age when I was there. <laughs> but, uh, you know, because PCs weren't in our vocabulary yet. That's right. There were no PCs. <laughs> no. So I was familiar with painting, you know, but not as fine art. Uh -huh. And that didn't really hit me until 2006. Okay. You know, and I, and I got back into painting. I started exploring um, the different... Um, uh, mediums and everything and, and textures and everything you could do, you know, uh -huh. with acrylic paint now. And that just excited me. That really lit the fire. And um, so it was like three years later that I uh -huh. actually found the virtual realm. Okay. And I already had some paintings, you know, stored up. So I brought them in, learned how to show them and the rest is history. <laughs> I have like, been nonstop. And the rest is history. So you, I'm listen, telling you, you originally started as a commercial artist. I got to put this one up here because somebody said they love your work. And oh, so, awesome. Um, <laughs> so I had to put that up there. I had to put that up. And you guys definitely 
shoot us some comments. Let us know where you're from too. You know, like post where you're from so we could be like shout shout you out. So you kind of came out of the commercial realm. Now, did you pursue any of the commercial realm, like as far as jobs and things like that? Well, actually, I I never worked as a commercial artist, mm -hmm. um, but I did work in the printing industry. You okay. know, but of course, as you know, pre press. But mm -hmm. of course, they always told you, you know, when you got the job, uh, there's no creativity involved in this. I'm like, yeah, I know. Yeah. But inevitably, somewhere along the line, you know, some client would need help with something. And there you were, you know, mm -hmm. so I did get to do a little bit. You so know. you got to you got to like dabble a little bit in it. It yeah. wasn't. Yeah. But I think that's just commercial art in general. It's, right. it's very structured. Yes. Yeah. So, and I did some freelancing, you know, and uh -huh. desktop publishing here and there. Somebody would need something. And I was always happy to jump on that. So. OK. Yeah. And so so you've been creating all of your life, but you literally told me. And, and who did you get your inspiration from? Like, who was your inspiration? Honestly, um, <laughs> when I was five in kindergarten, I, I actually painted instead of playing with the other little girls. Mm hmm. So I can't even tell you where the inspiration came. It was just natural. You know, I didn't want to pretend to cook pork chops, you know, and I, <laughs> I would ask the teacher for an apron and some paintbrushes and she'd set me up at the easel. Um, my mother was very artistically inclined, very mm -hmm. talented and, and totally into crafts. So she always had us doing some kind of craft projects. Um, mm -hmm. My father was actually a fine art um oil painter okay. and a graphic designer for the united states post office wow you know? so yeah I, I had it coming from both ends you know so, so did, he, did, he, did, he get, did he ever design any of those stamps <laughs> <laughs> who knows <laughs> really i don't i, I wouldn't be surprised yeah, right. i wouldn't no. be surprised yeah. That's pretty cool, though. I mean, that your dad was uh, your dad was an artist. Your mom was really crafty. So you feel like yeah. that kind of just flowed down to you, into you. Yeah. In and, you know, it, it wasn't even, con you know, a conscious thing. I just always loved to draw, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. on everything, the walls, <laughs> the furniture, you know. Um, and What's interesting is I remember one day after I had done a painting in kindergarten and we had our little show and tell and story time in the corner, the teacher said, you know, hold, held up one of my paintings and she said, Judy's going to be an artist one day. <laughs> and I'm sitting there going, uh, really? <laughs> I didn't know there was a word for it. You know, oh, that was first wow. we actually heard the word artist, you mm -hmm. know, I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, you know, and, and I guess she was right. Yeah, you're the one. You're the one that put all the other kids. Is like, okay, I'm not gonna paint anymore because Judy's horse looks like a horse and mine look like a cocker spaniel or something. You're in, that was Judy. Judy caused that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the other kids look at me like, who? What, what's with this kid? You know. <laughs> um, <laughs> I still so remember you, how much I love finger painting. Right. So, did you feel like even when you? Uh, was uh were young did you feel kind of singled out in a way artistically um as far as si singled out yes in a good way because um not well yeah even in elementary school and and definitely in junior high um i was always one of the kids that got pulled out of class to work on art projects <laughs> so like we we did a bambi a scene from bambi for assembly and guess who got to do the stage prop? Oh, <laughs> you know? wow. So wow. I can still remember standing in the back of the class while everybody else was doing their reading lessons. You know, I'm in the back drawing a life-size Bambi. And you they know. put you to work. They, yeah. They, was there any compensation included with this? He's <laughs> yeah, right. like an A. Like, I got a better grade than Seriously, everybody. Seriously, you know, what do I get for this? Yeah. Right. But, but yeah, I just really start enjoyed early. it. It's like yes. start using the yeah. artist early. So one of the things that you shared with me, oh, oh, look, okay, shout out from Trinidad, big fan, and awesome. another Brooklyn, New York. Way to go, Brooklyn. Wow. So uh, okay, that's the last time I'm gonna post, but I just thought the whole <laughs> like save your questions for after. 
uh, for later. Okay, so one of the things that you and I, you shared with me, we were talking was um, you, you like sewing. That was a big deal because you thought at some point in your life, you were going to actually be like a fashion designer. Oh, yeah. Um, I think it was about junior. Well, my entire family. So we had two sewing machines in the house. You know, mm -hmm. and I started sewing for my Barbie dolls. I mean, and then I started sewing for myself. But that's what that's what taught me how to uh, use patterns, mm -hmm. you know, because um, Simplicity made patterns for 12 mm -hmm. inch dolls. And so I learned how to sew at an early age. And that continued all the way up through my adulthood, <laughs> you know, until recent years. But mm -hmm. yeah, by junior high school, I knew I wanted to be a fashion designer. Okay. And in, in high school as a commercial art major, I was still, we didn't have fashion design at the time. Um, mm -hmm. That same high school has fashion design now. <laughs> but um, but I knew still. Yeah, you know, I'm like, oh, okay, you just wait for me to What was this when I was in school? <laughs> <laughs> but I wanted to be a fashion designer and I wanted to go to college for fashion design. Um, one school didn't accept me. Another school, my Parsons, my mother wouldn't let me go to Parsons because she said, you're going to be two hours away. If there's an emergency, I can't get to you. I'm like, oh. <laughs> so like I didn't get to go to don't work. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, okay. So I wound up at Tyler School of Art for graphic design uh -huh. instead. Well, I guess but, that was, you know, yeah. But I still, to be. Yeah, you know, but I, I continued to sew anyway, and I continued to, you know, I learned how to adjust patterns, and then I started learning how to create patterns, and, uh -huh. you know, so I could have been a contender, but, <laughs> but no. Up there. New York week, here I come. <laughs> you know, I used to subscribe to W Magazine. I don't uh -huh. know if you remember that. It was a gorgeous magazine. I do. I used magazine. to subscribe to them, too, those big old magazines. Yes. I loved it. It, it made awesome. you feel like you were special. <laughs> they didn't know I existed, but I did feel special. Right, with that big old magazine. It's like, I'm special. <laughs> it was you know. gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. It was. So, what was your first medium when you first started going When I first out? started painting? Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Well, that would be acrylics. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, now I had done some a little bit with watercolor, mm -hmm. you know, but at the time, I don't know. It just didn't grab me. It just didn't seem vibrant enough. Uh -huh. But when I got into the acrylics and I, well, see, when I was in college, acrylic, you had the acrylic paint, the pigments, and you uh -huh. had two mediums, gloss medium and matte. That was it. Right. You know, but fast forward 20 years or so. And now you had, uh, uh, you know, this long, you know, wide range of different texture mediums uh -huh. and gels and you know pebbles and sand and everything else and i just went nuts i went nuts because i'm really tactile you know right mm -hmm. and um i know you're not supposed to touch a person's painting but i understood a lot of people would say oh i just want to touch it mm -hmm. and i'm like i understand because i like touching it myself <laughs> you know but yeah i really got into that i really you know leaned toward acrylics because of that Mm -hmm. you know, now you say a lot of times. Oh, I'm sorry. Were you saying something? That's like, okay. I was going to say it's way beyond oil. Okay. Well, I I like oil paint, but I do like I paint with acrylic too, and I I, I share your feelings with watercolor. <laughs> I yeah. did watercolor. I was like, eh, it's not. Yeah. It just doesn't grab you. I know. <laughs> so okay. So you are tactile and you like texture. How mm -hmm. do you? But now you're you you still. You still paint in acrylics, but you also do a lot of digital work. How do you create that texture for yourself in digital work? Well, what's interesting is I usually start out with an acrylic painting, mm -hmm. you know, so it's already textured and okay. I scan that in. So it, it visually picks up that texture. And mm -hmm. then when I push it, you know, with digital filters or what have you, it creates even more texture, visual texture. So even though I can't really touch it, you know, you still see it and it gives the same satisfaction. So and you always start, oh, I'm sorry. So do you always good. start with a painting? 
Pretty much, yeah. Because of the fact that I like to get that texture, you know, the textural mm -hmm. element. Um, I, for a while there, I was experimenting with random photography. Like I literally just pick up my camera and just start, you know, aiming it around the room or at objects and just look for different angles and colors and, you know, lines, just the form, you know, uh -huh. and take pictures and then bring them in and see what I can do with them. But I prefer the paintings because of the textures. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Well, I've seen your paintings. They're absolutely phenomenal. I love, love, love them. If you guys want to follow along with Judy Lynn, she is on Facebook and she's on Instagram. Uh, she says she's not on Instagram that often. You know, when I had asked her about Instagram, she had to remember her Instagram tag. I know. By, <laughs> by <laughs> which... It just happens to be the same thing as her Facebook. So she is very good with marketing. Her branding is solid. So if you want to follow her on Facebook or Instagram, go ahead and click on Judy Lynn, uh, Judy Lynn Artist, and you can follow her on Facebook and Instagram. And uh, if you are interested in some of her work, she is on, uh, what is it, uh, Fine Art America? Fine Art America, um, yes, if you're interested in prints. And print. um, I, I don't have a lot of my newer work on Fine Art America, mm -hmm. though. Um, I'm trying to steer away from that, and I'm working on um, my own personal site where everything okay. will be available, and you can order it directly from me. All so right. in the meantime... <laughs> But and she does have some, I've, I've been on Fine Art America and she does have some absolutely beautiful pieces on there. So if you are looking for prints and you want to get some before her website's up and done, you can <laughs> definitely, you have a mailing list that they can sign on to on Fine Art America. And then when she does have her, uh, her, up, her other site up and going, she'll be able to transfer you to that new site. So definitely, if you're interested, uh, go over there and check out some of her work because it's absolutely beautiful. I've been on there and I love it. I know she's talking about, it, you know, she wants to move away from it. But at the moment, that's all she's got. So go over there. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going to start. What I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to start uploading more to Instagram. Uh -huh. Instagram, I haven't really populated much because Instagram is set up for posting pictures from your camera. Uh -huh. You know, that's really what it's about, photographs, right. and not so much uploading files from your computer, uh -huh. you know. Yeah, There's but you can do that on Instagram now. Yeah, there's there's a workaround so you can do that, and I managed to get three pieces up, uh -huh. you know. But I'm one of the peop one of those kind of people. It's like, okay, this is too much trouble. Forget, it. but <laughs> but well, yeah, no, I need to get a lot more on Instagram. Right. So the best way to to follow her is follow her on Facebook, follow her yes. on her Instagram. Go ahead and click on those, and then that you guys will be able to follow uh, Julie Lynn. We're going to get into a really cool subject, Julie Lynn is uh, when I spoke with her, she said, Louise, I have never been in a physical gallery space, um, but she is well known in the global community uh, because she actually operates in an amazing space, uh, um, an amazing virtual space that's called Second Life. And she she took me, uh, she showed me some of her galleries. She has gallery spaces. She has done amazing gallery shows in Second Life. So in reality, and she sells artwork also virtually. So she sells virtual work um, within Second Life. And we're going to actually get into some of that today to show you guys um, her gallery, because I told her, I said, I want you to come and just show and talk about your gallery space because I wanted you guys to get a wonderful feeling of her work and what she does. And not only is she creative visually with paint and digital art, but this woman has created an entire universe to me. Um, you know, she has a home, she has galleries and all of those kinds of things. But before we get into that, we're going to just share some things about the Beauty of Blackness Fine Art Show. And because I want you guys to join, if you are an artist in, here, either here in 
um, in Fort Collins or just anywhere, we are doing the Beauty of Blackness Fine Art Show. It's coming up this September 1st through the 4th. It's here in Fort Collins. We will be having it at the Foothills Mall. Exciting, exciting, exciting. We would love to have you. You can apply to the Beauty of Blackness Fine Art Show just by going to the Beauty of Blackness Fine Art Show.com. I'll put that up there. And you can actually apply to be a part of the show. And yes, I'm trying to drag Judy Lynn on over here so she can have her first, <laughs> she could be have her first um in person uh ex show and exhibit here with us at the Beauty of Blackness Fine Art Show. We have an amazing uh featured artist, which her name is Zudeka. Um, and she has some absolutely amazing, amazing art that I want to show you guys that you so you could be a part of that. And we're just gonna bring <music> guys so we're going to go into all right let me bring you back up girly girl here you go so i'm gonna make myself small and make you big and then we're going to bring you guys this is exciting we are going to bring second life up and she is going to take you through oh oh i gotta put this up hey auntie <laughs> <laughs> hey sweetie <laughs> Hey, Auntie. Oh, oh, that is yeah, kinda... wonderful. Somebody said they eagerly await your website. I do yeah. too. <laughs> I want to mention that that's Chuck Matrix from Second Life. Oh, hi, he's, Chuck. He's one of my Second hi, Life, Second oh, Life buddies. Yeah, she's gonna get me hooked up on Second Life, Chuck. So, boom, we got. Yeah, to... you'll get to meet him one day. <laughs> I'm sure she'll introduce us, and then we have. Uh, we have Debbie over here. Uh, she says she has lost vessel, emotional, and that's where it's at. Yes, a few of my pieces from the past. I know. Yes. That's Thank pretty you, exciting. Debbie. That is pretty exciting. Thank you guys for sharing that. So we're going to bring up, here we go. This <laughs> is, um, we're going to, this is actually Second Life. So you guys are literally uh, going to be experiencing her virtual world, um, her in her second life virtual world. So she's going to take you through that. She's going to take you through her galleries. And I'm going to just go ahead and let her go. Well, this is me in second life. <laughs> and this is um, a garden that I put together, a park, actually. I'm kind of proud of it. So I got to turn and show it. But it leads you into my main gallery. Uh, at the center ground region. And I want to stop and because I told him I would, I was going to do this. But behind me here, you'll see my my logo and also on my gallery, Chuck, Chuck Matrix, aka Chuck R. English, is also a graphic designer, very talented man. And I got him to do my logo for me. So, oh, wow. All right, yes. Chuck, you got to do mine too. So there. I yeah, so I was going to say, if anybody <laughs> wants, you know, Chuck to do anything for them, let me know and I'll put you in touch. There you go, Chuck. Yeah. Chuck's over here waving. <laughs> <laughs> waving frantically. <laughs> Chuck's waving frantically. All right, Chuck. All right, Chuck. He, she said my name. Uh-oh, say my name. Oh. I told him I was going to. <laughs> All right, get off, Chuck. That's it. That's it. She said your name. <laughs> I am really there. thankful for Chuck. Well, okay. So, so there we go. All right. Now tell them who's taking them through this gallery now. Let um, them know yeah, what well, they're walking with. Judy Lynn, 
Oh, in Second Life, I'm Judy Lynn India, because I had to have a last name. And that's in, I told you, homage to one of my former ki uh, kitty cats from years past. Her name was India. So I'm carrying right. so her name. If you're on Second Life or you are going yes. to join Second Life, you will look for Judy Lynn as Judy Lynn India. Yes. And I, I'll be happy to help you out, you know. Um, but these are some of the pieces that I've brought into Second Life over the years. This gallery has some of the newer pieces over the past year. Uh -huh. um, these are actually from two mono. I do a lot of uh, acrylic mono prints on, um, on paper, on canvas paper. And actually, I've been going crazy doing them for the past year okay. <laughs> or two because uh, they're a lot of fun to do. But these are two pieces that I brought in. Um, let's see. These are two acrylic paintings on canvas that actually got this ball rolling. They're, they're two of the first paintings that I brought in to Second Life in 2009. Okay. Which is why they have my full name on them. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think I, I think that's one of the ones I clicked on and showed. Can you make it larger for people? Yeah, I can zoom in a bit. Yeah. Okay. That's um, By the Light, which mm -hmm. was actually one of my more popular paintings. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I've had three artists tell me, you know, you should do a sequel based on that. And so I did Better Days. Mm -hmm. And that turned out to be even more popular than By the Light. And I did a third painting that uh, isn't on display here because it was purchased shortly after it was done um, mm -hmm. by a very good friend of mine. So I did the three and then I moved on. <laughs> but I'm thinking about going back to, you know, some illustrative painting again. It's been a while. Okay. So those are out of your sort of illustrated world. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. I, I just, you know, I just have, I have to comment. I love the way you walk. <laughs> in, <laughs> in this, I wish I could take uh, credit for that. In this digital <laughs> world. Really talented scripters and animators and stuff. Right. You walk, you walk with some serious, I know what I'm doing. Attitude. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, that, it, what's cool about Second Life is you can customize your avatar um, to the T, including uh -huh. the way they walk and the way they move. There's a whole store for animations. But, um, but yeah, so this is uh, another piece that I believe was based on a mono print, and I brought it into the computer and then pushed it a little further. Mm -hmm. um, but you can see, you know, texture from the canvas and the paint. You know, one of the things that I like about showing work in Second Life is that there are settings that allow you to accentuate um, the, the canvas or the texture on the painting. Uh -huh. You know, um, don't ask me to explain how it's done. <laughs> now, how long have you been, uh, how long have you been showing virtually? Since 2009. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's actually what brought me into Second Life. Uh -huh. um, I was reading the New York Times and they did an interview with a Second Life artist. Uh -huh. And that's when I found out that you could actual artists could actually come into the virtual world and show their work. Uh -huh. You know, that just blew my mind. You know, I ran home from work, downloaded Second Life and jumped in and I've been here ever since. And you've been here ever since. And ever you, since. and how many galleries do you, do you personally own in Second Life? I actually, and I didn't realize until last night, I actually have four. Okay. Of, you know, that are just mine. And, um, in the earlier years, I actually used to host other artists in my gallery at Center Ground mm -hmm. as well. Um, at one point, I think it was 2013, I had, there were six of us doing mm -hmm. the show. And um, much like you would curate, you know, a brick and mortar gallery, except that I didn't have to hire staff to hang, you know, the canvases, <laughs> which was pretty nice. But um, these are... These are actually from acrylic paintings that I did. Okay, okay. And That's then, what I really, I really love. Like a lot of people do digital work and they layer and layer and layer. 
which is mm -hmm. phenomenal. But I really love the fact that you start with an actual acrylic painting and right. then you put it into um, digital, you, you, mm -hmm. you scan it in and then you enhance I'm, it. Exactly. I manipulate it, you know, and mm -hmm. just see where I can go with it, really. That, yeah, yeah. That, that's what got yeah. me because originally I thought originally that you, um, this is such a fabulous gallery. Because I thought originally you just did it all digital, but when I found out that you start with an actual painting and then you go in and just kind of do more to That's it. That's right. Yeah. So. It's digital's part of the workflow. It's not always the entire, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm never really satisfied with I'm I won't say never, but I'm rarely satisfied with just the acrylic painting. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you know, I'll do it and it'll be like, yes, that's it. It's done. But usually I look at it and go, well, that's nice, but. <laughs> <laughs> More. I could do better. What else can I do? Yeah. It's like, you know, digital is definitely part of the toolbox. So do you feel um, like digital gave you another, as opposed to like a painter, digital gave you another avenue of expression? Absolutely. It, it extended it, you know, mm -hmm. what you can do. Mm -hmm. Um, I understand a lot of people aren't familiar with digital, mm -hmm. the digital process, or they have some odd idea of what that is, mm -hmm. you know, like press a button and the computer does something for you, you know? Um, and that's why I like to, ex you know, basically explain, no, nope, no, nope, this started with me. <laughs> you know, the computer didn't spit this out. I did. Right. Uh, it just helped. It's one of the tools. So have you had problems, you know, because I, I, I know the digital world and when digital art came into the forefront, um, have you had issues with people about digital art or appreciating what you do? Well, it depends. Um, people in, for instance, in Second Life mm -hmm. have no problem with digital art because mm -hmm. that's why they're in Second Life, right. you know? They appreciate all types of creativity. Uh, we're all part of a digital world. So I have no problem, you know, appealing to collectors within the virtual realm. Mm -hmm. um, those who are not really computer savvy, maybe, or, you know, just aren't part of this, you know, techno technological world. Mm -hmm. um, they are generally the ones who say, no, no, I don't do digital not interested, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and I partly understand because digital has to be printed. Right. You know, which means that it's not necessarily going to be original or one of a kind. Mm -hmm. So we have to take it a step further and make that digital print an original. And that's what I'm going to be working more on this year. And, the, and is, what will you be doing with that? Um, basically having a piece say like this one, uh, printed on canvas, mm -hmm. or it could be printed on paper, and then going back into the, into the print with paint, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. extending it so that it literally becomes one of a kind, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so that just adds a step to the process in right. creating I, an original painting. That would be so amazing. It's like it starts as a painting, becomes digital, and then returns becomes as a painting. A I know right. it's like the three steps of becoming an yeah. art, a painting. That's the process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the process is known as a remark, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so do you feel that digital art is? Um, I mean, outside of the virtual world, do you feel that digital art is being more accepted out uh, as being more accepted now than it was in the past? Absolutely, um, especially especially with NFTs, you know, <laughs> uh, people are, are trying to understand what is this NFT thing. And in the process, they're learning about how digital art is created, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and how it can be unique, you know. And um, I think we were talking about this last night, how NFT, we think of NFTs as these little cartoon animations, because mm -hmm. that's what we keep seeing, right. you know. But the really talented digital artists are who are also animators, you know, I, and it's hard to explain it. You really have to see it, but where they're taking pieces like this and just 
you know, they go through this morphing and the colors and the swirls and, you know, the diff it, it's just amazing. It's insane. You know? Yeah, I actually showed you one from an artist friend of mine. Uh, he's He was down yeah. here and he's like, look amazing. That was Kevin. Uh, yes. I give Kevin some props. I showed you Kevin's piece and it was, and we were both like, that yes. is awesome. But you, I, I got to talk to him. <laughs> Oh. You know, I had to jump in his box last night. Oh, did you? So you did. Yes. <laughs> that's that's right up my alley, augmented reality. Oh my right. goodness. So and so just being yeah. able to see some of that actually on the screen um and just be like, hey, this is awesome. And that's why I think that I loved the uh what you're doing in the virtual world. So these are some these paintings, these are some of your earlier pieces, aren't they? These, these are right actually here. monoprints. Oh yeah, these are these, right. These are your monoprints. Yeah. We were looking at those yesterday. So share a little bit more about your monoprints. Well, and I that, the actually, process and everything. Yeah. Well, you know there are different ways to create monoprints. Um, most popular, of course, is with um, a press. You know, the big wheeled press, and you you know use blankets on a uh, on the paper with the plates, and you're you know pulling them through. Mm -hmm. I wish I had one of those, you know, but um, for those of us who can't quite manage that, there are these things I, I discovered called gel, jelly plates. And they're literally a gel, like a, a silicone gel. Mm -hmm. So they, they have a soft surface and you go onto the surface with paints and inks and then you put the paper down and burnish it and you pull off a print. And you can do oh, that wow. many times, you know, for layering. Mm -hmm. And I discovered that like two years ago. And oh, wow. and what size are these? What size are you working? They come. With? You can get gel plates that are like little, you know, mm -hmm. really small. Um, not. I think. I think my smallest is nine by fourteen, mm -hmm. and my largest is twelve by fourteen. Okay. So, okay. yeah, I think that's the biggest. Because I've but, done um, I've done prints on plexi, mm -hmm. but once again you need the press yeah. or that little right. thing that you keep rolling. You know. That's what I have. I have the Baron. <laughs> yes, you get some exercise. Yeah, you build and, those uh, arm muscles. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I I've been going crazy with it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I have been going crazy with the with the uh, gel plates. Uh -huh. And um, these are actually, I brought them into Second Life, of course, you know, to uh, make them available digitally. Mm -hmm. But um, many of the actual, the originals are available. I think th these actually are available. Okay. You know. I'm, I'm writing and, down uh, the plates. plate. Yes. Yeah. Because I'm going uh, to look that up. G-E-L-L-I, I think. Okay, G E L L I. Mm -hmm. Now that's oh, the brand. Plate. Okay, that's the popular brand, but you can you can actually make your own. I would <laughs> basically <laughs> out of gelatin. They add a few other things, you know, and put it in a cake, you know, on a on a baking sheet and right because gelatin, you know, if you do gelatin right, it it will last forever. <laughs> yeah, that's what they say. I said that's okay. I'll just go ahead and order it through Amazon. There you go. There you go. That is beautiful. I love your mono prints. Yeah. I just love the, uh, and that's why I'm constantly trying. I'm trying to bring you to Fort Collins. Like you have to come bring some mono prints to Fort Collins. That would be um, awesome. So now, are these? Have you uh, gone and did did you do digital work on these as well? No. The actually the only digital part of these is my signature. Okay. Okay. Yeah. To bring them in, but um, the actual the originals are signed on the back. Oh, okay, okay. And now, do you have now the size of these? Because those look ginormous in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> everything is second life. <laughs> right, but those they, look ginormous. Yeah. How They're, big? They, but how big are the actual originals? About nine by eleven. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, I was just looking there nearby, but I can't really get to them really. Quickly, okay. but about okay. nine by eleven. Yeah, because that looked like that would fill my wall. I'm like, I'm. Well. <laughs> <laughs> that 
That would be and amazing if I could do a, you know, a humongous gel print. That would be wild. Yeah, come here and we'll just make a big jelly to do that. <laughs> now, what of paper course, do you, Okay, what paper do you use for the gel print? Um, I use actually um usually acrylic uh canvas paper. Okay. Okay. Um can't think of the name of the brand right now, but right. there are there are a couple of them. Yeah. So you use a canvas paper. Okay. Yeah, it's a, a nice heavy paper that actually has a canvas texture. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's nice. I like yeah, that. Yeah, so it grabs the paint. Now this is not a monoprint, but it started as two monoprints that okay. I brought into the computer and then you know use clipping. Tools. So you over you so you overlaid them or you just yes yeah okay. like Photoshop you know I brought them in and, and layered them and then cut away certain portions. Okay, this was the first one I did when I was practicing that. Uh -huh. You know to see how it worked. And now this, how how much do you sell in Second Life? Oh my goodness! Um, to be honest, is I could be keeping track of that and Chuck's <laughs> busted me. Um, but I generally make, I have sales throughout the day, most okay. days. So, so yeah, you're continually totally selling. So you're selling right now. Yeah. Yes. As a matter of fact, after we talked last night, as soon as I hung up with you, I had a sale. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I have been blessed in second life. I really have. Uh -huh. And so when you originally started in second life, you um you didn't own your own gallery you actually uh showed in galleries but you didn't own your own gallery as of that when you first started well when i first started um after i you know got the lay of the land just as a newbie i mm -hmm. found a shopping center that was near a jazz club mm -hmm. and she had vacancies so i rented a shop okay. and actually brought in my little 12 paintings you know, learned how to put them on the walls and put some seating. It was mm -hmm. really cute, you know, and um, I got to know people, you know, from the jazz club and okay. the owner was, you know, often telling people, you know, Ju you should see Judy Lynn's work. And she'd send them down, you know, to down the sidewalk to my little shop. Oh, so wow. that's where I started. And, okay. um, and then another artist in Second Life, let me come back to me and walk. But, um, he saw my paintings and he told a gallery owner um, that he knew about them. And mm -hmm. she came by and took a look and she invited me. That was a uh, life stream was the name of the gallery, I believe. Mm -hmm. And uh, she invited me to show my work there. Okay. And from there, uh, another, another gallery owner and her husband, Merlina Rocococo was her name. She saw my work and she invited me. And folks who are in the uh, comments here know who I'm talking about. If they're in Second Life, um, the Pirates uh, g galleries. There were 10 galleries she and her husband created and ran. And they had, every month or so, they had a new group of artists. And we were all real life artists and painters. And um, she would have group shows in each of the galleries. And every month she'd, she'd tell me which gallery she wanted me to be in that month. You know, so for the first two years, she kept me busy okay. and thanks to her, she kept me painting, mm. you know, I might not have painted as frequently as often as I did. If, if you hadn't her. been in the gallery. So that's really interesting yeah. that, uh, cause it sounds like it works similar to just about, you know, what we do, what artists do in the real world. Um, right. You set up your artwork, you set up your shop, you go out and mingle with people. It's not, you don't just set up your virtual store and then it's like, and then just expect people to come. You literally went out and socialize with the neighbors. Absolutely. And then, and then the neighbors were like, hey, started sending people. And then via that, you got to meet yeah. even more people. So it's, it's, it's similar to what an artist would do um, out in, in the physical just, world. Right, in the physical world. So that's mm -hmm. really interesting. So why haven't you shown in the physical world? That's a good question. <laughs> but I think um, people have to know you exist. 
-hmm. for them to invite you. And, you know, because I have not been really, you know, hardcore with showing my work on things like, Insta you know, social media, mm -hmm. you know, um, I think people just really didn't know I exist, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, at least that's, that's really the only thing that I can see. <laughs> so you know. what would you like people to know now, because you exist now, um, and <laughs> I, I think you've always existed, but... <laughs> But now that you're entering into, because I know you exist, because I've seen you on Facebook and was able to get to meet you. And so what would you like people to know about you and your art and what direction are you looking to go? Well, basically, this is what I do. You know, it is literally all that I do, it's the reason I exist. Um, yeah, it's for collectors. Mm -hmm. I, let's see, how to really put this into words. My, my artwork is, is about mood, really, you know. Um, I know that a lot of people want paintings that have a message, you know, that are really deep. Uh -huh. But my my paintings, my artwork is about mood. It's about how it makes you feel. Uh -huh. um, I had considered actually um, contacting uh, doctors' offices because uh -huh. they they tend to be you know collectors. Um, any place where I know hospitals like to show a lot of abstract work, uh -huh. you know, because it does change the mood um, of the people, the the patients, and that's pretty much my kind of my target or anyone who just wants, you know, to create a mood, mm -hmm. you know, not just to make a statement, but to create a mood. Um, right. That's pretty much what I go for. I had a gentleman in Second Life look at one of my paintings at a show and he told me that it made him cry. Really? And I, yeah. <laughs> and I thought, well, why? He said, I'm looking at this. I can sense the pain that you were probably in when you created it. Mm. And I said, mm. wow. Um, I didn't realize I was in pain when I created it. <laughs> but, you he know, when I thought about it. You seen something you hadn't quite seen. <laughs> yeah, apparently something came through that, you know, I wasn't really conscious of, uh -huh. you know, but it was there in the imagery. That is interesting. Mm -hmm. That is and, interesting that he saw that. Yeah. And, and that's my guy. You know, that's my customer. I want people to look at my painting and get lost in it. You mm -hmm. know, um, some of it, some of what I do can be decorative. Uh -huh. You know, um, it can go either way. You know, I've, I've heard artists, you know, who put down decorative art, you know, because it's not cutting edge, because there's no message, you know, it's. I like why. Decorative. I know. I, I think mine would be considered decorative. I call it some my of pretty, it. But... I, I call it my pretty art. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I don't see any problem with art being pretty. You know, right. it is. It's not. I think we we've, we've gotten into a world where it has to be edgy. It has to have a message. It has to be yeah. like in your face, and then your pretty art gets pushed to the side because it doesn't. It's not in your faces, and I think that's. Um, do you find that that's something that galleries kind of promote um, within the, the framework of, of the art world where galleries promote more of like looking for edgy or in your face or things like that? Do you find that that's something that galleries promote? Not necessarily I, in the virtual world. I do. Mm -hmm. um, just, you know, reading up on galleries and the experiences that other artists have had with galleries, you know, mm -hmm. I I do. It's my understanding that they are looking for someone, you know, who's cutting edge. Um, yeah, as Chuck said, you know, sometimes the message is allowed to be, you know, and th he said this is yeah, beautiful. Let's put, Chuck, let's put Chuck on. Let's put Chuck up. <laughs> put Chuck <laughs> on I, the screen. I also want to say Chuck is a gallery owner 
in Second Life. Oh, nice. He owns nice. The Janus, the Janus Galleries. The Janus and, Gallery. Yes. And he's had me, um, he's hosted my work uh, several times over the past nice. couple of years. Nice. Yeah. I'm going to be looking Chuck up when I come to Second Life, you know, and be like, hey, Chuck. Yeah. I got pretty Chuck, work too. <laughs> Chuck and his wife, Jewel. Yeah, the two of them are awesome. Well, we um, got, um, this yeah. is, uh, what is this? Um, <laughs> my sister. <laughs> my baby sister. Your baby sister. I had to put her up there because she's like, love, uh, love from her baby sister. Um, <laughs> got yeah. the family in the house. <laughs> your family's in the house. It's like your whole family in here. Be like, get off. No. Oh, goodness. <laughs> That's wonderful. I am so glad they're here and hanging out with you. So, I mean, uh, what I really love what you're doing in Second Life. And my thing is, is because I know you want to do more um, in the physical realm, in the physical world, but you seem yeah. to be very comfortable uh, within the Second Life world. You seem to be doing well in the, in the uh, virtual world as well. What would you want um, for yourself in the physical world? Honestly, to be as active as I am in Second Life, you know, okay. um, Second Life is is fine and is great, you know, but and there is an economy in Second Life, mm -hmm. you know, um, that the the you know did not what what am I trying to say? The money in Second Life, you know, the word for it. Mm -hmm. um, does trade out to USD, uh -huh. but the exchange rate isn't one to one. So I can't oh, okay. live. I can't live on second life. On second life. You know. So, uh, so what would you have to do? Um, what kind of things would you have to do, or what kind of things do you feel that you have to you you have to do to enter into or you know into the uh, physical realm? What kind of things need to happen for you? As I see it, I need to be able to do in the physical world the same thing that I do in the virtual world. And that is to advertise, to make noise yeah. and let everybody know I'm here and put my work out there, you know, in front of the collectors. Um, I do have a couple of collectors in the physical world. I can't ignore uh -huh. that, um, you know, grateful to them. Uh -huh. One is in Colorado, as a matter of fact. Um, <laughs> But yeah, you know, just in Second Life, I'm walking around, I showed you with a tag over my head that says Paint Slinger. And right. I wear that because anywhere I go in Second Life, people see that mm -hmm. and they go, oh, she's an artist. And then they can bring up my profile, you right. know, and read about what I do and visit my galleries. Well, mm -hmm. if I could do something that easy in the in the physical world, you know, I'm not walking <laughs> around with a tag over my right. head. You should just, just put a tag up. Swear yeah, just get a hat, you know, like dealy boppers or something to say paint slinger. But, uh, you know, if it were as easy for me to advertise, mm -hmm. you know, what I do in physical world, you mm -hmm. know, I, I might have the same success that I do in, in the virtual world. Right. You know, so and life we, would be wonderful. <laughs> for all of us, we'd all wear something on our heads. Hey, you. here's a problem. So, you guys, if you're out there and you have questions, you are free to ask questions. Um, and like I said, share, ask questions. We are here for you. We love, love, love ask, answering questions. And I love putting my artists on the spot with questions. <laughs> <laughs> so ask away. Once again, I just want to share with you guys the Beauty of Blackness Fine Art Show is coming up this September 1st through the 4th. Let's try to get Judy Lynn out to the Beauty of Blackness Fine Art Show. So if you are out there, you're an artist or art lover, we would love to have you. And we are still, we are looking for artists. The deadline is June 30th, guys. June 30th is the deadline. You can apply at the Beauty of Blackness Fine Art Show dot com. That's going to open this up for
pushing buttons. <laughs> I'm just pushing buttons. We're going to open this up for questions. So if you have some questions for Judy Lynn, I know you guys are all out there like, we already know her. <laughs> her artwork, we got her stuff. So I'm going to open up for questions because we have five minutes. So if you guys want to ask her some questions or just tell her how wonderful she is, because that's all you guys have been doing anyway. It's <laughs> throwing accolades out there. <laughs> I was, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. He said he show me in a heartbeat. I love that. Thank you, Chuck. He's awesome. <laughs> uh, okay, so we have a question here. Do you ever paint something that reminds you of an individual? Mm, not specifically, like, you know, literally. Um, if you mean, like, have I ever done portraits? Um, in my early days, yeah, because when you're in school, they're not about, you know, they're not, well, at least back then, they weren't necessarily, all over the place. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, you're, you're doing portraits, you're doing, you know, still life, you're doing, um, nude models, that was always fun. Um, oh yeah, nude was always fun. The fat nudes were always fun. <laughs> oh my gosh. I did, I mean, and What's I'm you? not calling anybody fat, but they were the best people to talk <laughs> Because they're all this shading and the, sh and the form Every, and the shapes. I loved, I loved <laughs> yes. the art um, uh, uh, a weight challenge or whatever, however you yeah. say it correctly. Yeah. They were, yeah. you guys were the best people to draw. We loved having you as, as, as uh, models. Yeah, it was, I have to point this out, but um, I can't say that I've actually painted something that reminds me of an individual. Okay. Or so, I may have didn't realize it, but not not intentionally. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, she said, what did she say? I guess what I'm asking. Um painting on the energy. You felt no, like but that's a good idea. Oh, that's interesting. That's that a good is idea interesting. though. Interesting. Okay, here's somebody. He said, Would you ever put voice over art? with your artwork in the future. Hmm. That's interesting. Voiceover art? Yeah, I'm not quite sure, but I'm like, that's interesting. I wouldn't mind trying that. You mean literally talking? Talking sure. over? Yeah, I'm not sure. Can you, mm -hmm. um, can you elaborate on that, Tucker, uh, with the voiceover? Chuck I'm wanted to know, that. Um, could you tell me about the inspiration behind differences? Differences. Do we have differences somewhere? I'm not sure that's it. You know, one of the things that I have to laugh at myself about and get better with, mm -hmm. I have so much art now and in <laughs> Second Life that I've forgotten what I've named them. Oh. So <laughs> that tells me somebody does not keep an inventory list. <laughs> yeah, I been you know, and in the real world, you have to, you know, you have to. But yeah, um, uh, Chuck, you'd have to send us a picture or something. This yeah, you did <laughs> not remember the painting. So. Uh, yeah, not by the name. I don't remember because not when I paint, name. when I mm -hmm. when I paint, um, in order to well, as I'm painting, sometimes um, an idea will hit my head mm -hmm. while I'm creating the image, and I know what I'm going to name it. And then okay. there are times when I finish it and I'm sitting back looking at it thinking, okay, what does it make me think of? You know, what do I see in this? So I'm looking at it the way the spectator's looking at it. Uh -huh. And then I come up with a name for it. So you're drawing on the emotion that you're having when you exactly. look at it. Exactly. Exactly. So, okay. so yeah, I came up with differences for one and I can't remember which one it was. So yeah, I, I literally have to ask, when we're in world, I have to ask, can you give me a screenshot? Because right, Chuck, give her a screenshot when she's back in Second World, so she'll know. Yeah, he'll fuss at me. Um, yeah, yeah, he's definitely he he should fuss at you too, especially you're live on the air. And <laughs> all right, so Tucker said yes. He's talking about the voiceover. <laughs> he's oh, he's actually trying to res in Second Life. Um, so Tucker, he is talking about voiceover and. No, I hadn't thought of that, but there was a time when I was trying to be a voiceover artist, a voiceover actor. I actually mm -hmm. was trying to. And I found out that you can't 
just jump into that. Yeah, like James or exactly. Oh, I have thought of, I thought about doing voiceover. Um, I don't like the sound of my voice, but I've had other people tell me, you know, sh you should do voiceover. You have a nice voice. I think you have a nice voice. I so take everyone's me. word for it. I don't know. Right. Take our, <laughs> take what take I our found... word for it. Chuck, did you figure out the picture? Because I can bring, did you send it over to her gallery? Um, because yeah, he can... can just, actually, I'm still logged in, so he can just upload a screenshot right. of it. Why are you not? Oh, hold on. Let's see if, let's see if we can get, there we go. Um, Chuck, can you send it over? Because now I want to know what it is. I <laughs> There he goes. You found it? Okay. Um, I'm going to have to open another window when I click on this. Okay. Oh, I don't think you guys can see it. Oh! No, you'll have to bring the other window in. You might have to go out and come back in with it. Um, yeah, and I'm not really sure how to do that. But No, just take your share off and then reshare. Oh, in true. Your, in your window, yeah. There you Actually, are. Actually, there it is. I oh, just dragged oh, it look over. At look at you. Look at you. Look at you, magic one. <laughs> She's like, I and don't that, know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'll be an expert by the end of this. Um, yeah, differences. I was playing around, oh, and this was I inappropriate. Like this I, I actually like took a monoprint and used as the background, and then I, I went back into it with, in Procreate, you know, with brushes and created the uh, imagery on top. Oh, and I like that. So, okay, so this was a painting and then you mm -hmm. put these images on top. This, this mm -hmm. is really nice. I like yeah. it. And the reason I called it differences was because what I just created two human figures. And then I said, yeah. this looks like this guy is standing sort of looking, you know, forward, but he's standing mm -hmm. strong, sort of, you know, he's aware of the guy behind him who seems mm -hmm. kind of sheepish. It, mm -hmm. And it looked to me like they just had an argument, mm -hmm. you know, they just had a debate mm -hmm. and I can see the tension going on between them, mm -hmm. you know, and that's why I called it differences because they've mm -hmm. had their differences. Right. Yeah. That's I really I like about. that piece. That's a, I, that is a really, really nice piece. Thank you. I've been um, actually thinking about doing a series of getting more illustrative, but mm -hmm. you know, doing a series called folks because, um, we lost my mother in 2018 and we, my sisters and I divvied up, you know, all of the old pictures and photographs uh -huh. and mom had a lot of photos of, you know, that were taken when she was a kid, you know, and all of the relatives gathered around and everything. Many of these people, we don't even know who they are, you know, cause I could never corner my mother and have her go through all the pictures and name everybody. Girl, so I all I know is, <laughs> yeah. So I, you know, to me, they're just folks, you know, mm -hmm. and you know, some of them were dressed up in their Sunday best, you know, and all hanging out by the car and taking pictures. And I'm, these are such cool pictures. So I thought, you know what, I have these so that I can actually use them as models. And oh, wow. so I yeah. am thinking about doing a, a series of paintings, mm -hmm. you know, called folks. Oh, okay. That sounds really neat. Let's see. Um, so we're going to head out, but let's see. Tucker, Tucker's got something. What did Tucker say? Never. <laughs> I was just saying. My nephew oh. Junior, his dad is an artist. Just saying, putting a voice to each art piece. That would be cool. <laughs> that would be kind of neat where the artwork, when you t click on the artwork, you, you have like a voice. Yeah. Talking about yeah. it, that would be kind of neat. And because um, I one of the As things I was you, one of the things I was going to ask you when you have your when you connect your when you get your website hooked up, are you going to ha be able to when they click on the artwork, will they be able to go to your website? Um, well, on the website, you mean on the website, or you mean no, when like I put when the they go in, when they go in to. Um, your virtual world, will you have something oh. where if they wanted to go to the website, um, when they click on it, they can actually buy the original painting. You know, it's like, yes. yeah, they could buy the virtual painting, but to have something where they can actually click on it and buy the original artwork as well. As a matter of fact, if you can bring the sec that screen up again, um, there is, I have a sign on the wall mm -hmm. right here. Okay. And that's exactly what it does. 
when you click on it, it brings up, you know, this little dealy here and it says go to page. And, it, oh, and okay. right now it takes you to Fine Art America. Okay. So nice. yeah, I can actually script it that, that way. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Yes. So. I definitely connect the two worlds. A lot of people come in to do whatever they came in for and they keep their, their world separate. Uh -huh. That's never been my agenda. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Totally like connected. Thomas. Thomas is NFTs. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, so I was just thinking Kevin. of that. All right. Yes, Kevin, we are in there that we're going to have yeah. some very uh something about that make the original a part of the nft also yes okay. offering the original yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yep that's what we're looking at so all right thank you so much this has been so enlightening i will be entering into the second life world i've already set up my account i just awesome. i just haven't I haven't set up my avatar yet. I just look like anybody when I go in there. I, you know, I haven't, set up, I haven't set up. I my can't avatar. wait to meet you here. I know. Oh, I, I do am... want to mention. Oh, go ahead. Um, behind me are other uh, gel prints. These are also mono you prints. Up. I'm gonna bring you up. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. I just wanted to point out that these, because we hadn't pointed out, but this piece here, uh, which is called wavelength. And these two over here, <laughs> trying to scoot around, um, mm -hmm. which is one of my Psychic Sky series, and this one called Watching You. These are also monoprints. They started as monoprints and then be became digital pieces. Mm -hmm. I just oh, wanted okay. to share those. Those are yeah. really pretty. Though I really, really love. Yeah. Uh, I just I love what you do, and because I am huge into like acrylics, because. And I feel like the digital world works so well with acrylics because acrylics are just like, bam, bam. The colors mm -hmm. are just right out there. And I feel like that works so well with the acrylic paint because um, you get it does. vibrant colors in that. Yes. So, and you can enhance that. Yeah. 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 So I'm, you know, so I'm like, okay, I'm going to do me some digital stuff. I've, I've done a little bit of digital, not a lot, um, but have done some. So, but I want to just say thank you so much for allowing me to interview you. You, I, you know, and it's crazy because uh, we're friends on Facebook, but we didn't like know, know each other. And I, I just right. look at people's work and things like that and just think, hey, this would be a great person to interview. And so I'm so uh, glad I connected with you on Facebook and was able to do this interview with you and to get to know you. Um, because that was the whole thing. It's like, it wasn't just to interview you, but I know so much more about you now. And you have literally opened my eyes to a whole nother world. And like I said, I've dabbled in virtual, I dabble in NFTs, but this is like. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, see, that was, that was the way I felt when I discovered virtual. It's like, wow. <laughs> you know? yes, yeah. So, I'm, so I, it's I, been a pleasure meeting you. Yeah, it so really I'm is. like I said, I'm gonna still be trying to drag you over here to the Beauty of Blackness Fine Art Show in some manner. Uh, we will get you. We're, we're gonna get you into the real world. Especially awesome. now that I know you got some Colorado collectors, you'd be like, go over <laughs> there so you all can come see my work. So um, thank you so much uh, for allowing me to interview you and to get to know you and also your friends. You've had so many people come on and say hi I to know. you and encourage you. That is such a blessing. Thank you guys for coming thank in. <laughs> yes. Thank you guys for coming and commenting and being a part of this interview. I do not take that lightly. Uh, what was uh, what was it? Uh, Chuck's still over here talking. We trying to close up the day. <laughs> <laughs> He's awesome. Chuck's still like, hold on, hold on. We got a hello from Texas. I got to put them up. I can't be leaving people hanging out there. Uh, oh, hey there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Debbie. Yeah, thank you so much. And, you know, oh, I am yeah. always looking for artists to interview. So if you are on Facebook or any of those kind of things, hit me up. Let me know who you are. Um, I love interviewing people. I love interviewing artists. I love being able to share what you're doing, especially if you're doing something 
totally new, totally out there, like Judy Lynn, this was totally different from a lot of the things <laughs> that I have done. <laughs> what is it, National Baby? It's Indiana. Okay. Oh, okay. There we go. I got to put him up there. There we go. <laughs> All right. And uh, what is, uh, Thanks, thank Kevin. you so much, Kevin. I got an SL. Um, there we go. I got to yes, put him up. Yes, it is. I Don't pay attention to, to, yeah. Right. <laughs> <This is> like... <laughs> I gotta put them all up. I gotta make sure everybody is seen. So thank you guys so much. So we're gonna close out, and I'm going to put up some more. Um, so we're just gonna. I'm just gonna share a little bit about the Beauty of Blackness Fine Art Show. Don't go anywhere, uh, Judy, and we'll talk. So thank you guys so much. This has been such an awesome, awesome, awesome interview. I am so glad I'm doing interviews again. I love meeting new artists and seeing what they're doing and just sharing that with people. This has been so much fun. So if you are an artist out there um, and you want to get into doing some art shows and things like that, the Beauty of Blackness Fine Art Show, we are looking for other artists. And this is actually a Black Fine Art Show. And this is all original, all original, all original artwork. We do, we cater to the collectors. So if you're interested in being a part of Beauty Blackness Fine Art Show, definitely, like I said, go to our website, uh, www, the beauty of blackness fine art show. You'll see it on the ticker down there, but I'm going to bring it up off the ticker so you can see it, um, and see the whole thing. It's the beauty of blackness fine art show.com. The show is September 1st through the 4th. We are so excited about the beauty of blackness fine art show coming to Fort Collins. It'll be in Fort Collins the 1st through the 4th. It's going to be at the, hold on, the Foothills Mall. And we're looking, we're just excited about them allowing us to have it there. It is going to be such a fun. And don't forget that every Saturday we do the Black Art and Culture Artist Interview Series. Sometimes they might be pre-recorded, but the vast majority of the time we love, love, love having them live. Um, our featured artist for the Beauty of Blackness Fine Art Show is Zudeka. I never say her last name because I don't mess it up, but I just love the whole Zudeka. She's going to be one name after a while anyway. It's just going to be Zudeka. And so, uh, but that's the whole thing. So definitely, if you guys loved this show, definitely go ahead. And if you're on our uh, YouTube, go ahead and click that subscribe like us, follow us. We would love to have you back for some more of the interviews. So thank you so much. And we will see you on the next round.